Hey guys, how's it going? It's Baggins here. Now, ever since Realm Royale came out on Steam as of about two days ago, I've had an influx of new players asking me in the YouTube comments and in the Twitch chat, Baggins, can you make a video to sort of explain this game and help me get over the basics so I can show this to my friends and just myself so I know what's going on? And uh, that seems like a pretty good idea. So I did do a video similar to this uh, maybe more than a month ago. However, the game has changed quite a bit since then, so let's go into it and uh, I'll teach you guys how to play Realm Royale. Now, a quick little bit of uh, background about me just so you know it's not some pleb teaching you how to play the game. I've been playing the game for uh, about two months since it was in like super closed alpha and you couldn't even make YouTube videos or stream it. During that time, I was able to hit master in the player rating, which is one of the highest rankings available, and I average about 11 kills a game, so I'm pretty decent. Now, one of the first things you're faced with in the current iteration of Realm Royale is do you play duo or squad? There's no solo queue currently in the game, not sure if there will be in the future, so you're either going to have to pair up with one other person or three other people. Now, this is a bit intimidating to some people, including myself, you know, not all of us have friends or friends that are available to play all of the time. But fear not, I have a solution for you here. So if you go down in the description below or check out the YouTube comments, I'm going to be posting a link to a Discord server, which is the official Realm Royale Discord server. There's over 10,000 people in there. A lot of them are looking for group. They're in the same situation as you. So uh, you can get yourself together with some other people in there and have a good time, whether you're looking for duos or squads. That's you covered on the first step. However, you can just go in with random fill as well and uh, let fate decide what becomes of you for that game. But okay, you're in. You've picked your squad, you've got your teammates. Now you have to choose a class. Now at the time of recording, there's currently five classes in the game. That is Warrior, Engineer, Assassin, Mage, and Hunter. Now this is where Realm Royale gets pretty different from other Battle Royales. Usually they don't have a class system in it. This is uh, something pretty unique to Realm Royale. But basically the difference between the classes is the weapons that are available to you and the abilities or spells that you can use throughout the game. So when you're opening up chests and uh, looting the area, you'll find abilities that are specific to your class. And they're all sort of within a theme, so the warrior can move around and heal himself and create shields and take a lot of damage and deal a lot of damage. The engineer creates machines, so he has like turrets and totems, bombs of fire, a big uh, thing that launches out plasma, and he can use a jetpack to go into the air. The assassin has a sniper rifle, he can turn invisible, you know, stuff of that sort. The mage can fly around, creates fireballs, can turn themselves into solid ice, and the hunter has a bow rolls around the ground and just generally does a truckload of damage. So from those very basic descriptions of the classes, you can probably choose what sounds the most fun to you. In my opinion, they're all pretty balanced. Although one thing I will say, Warrior probably has the lowest skill ceiling of all the classes. So a lot of people will find Warrior easy to pick up and play. Whereas Assassin has one of the highest skill caps in the game. So be aware when you play Assassin, it may feel pretty poopy at first, but that's just because the class is difficult to master. Right now you've chosen your class, you've talked to the team in the lobby, and now you're uh, flying through the air in the Zeppelin airship thing and you're gonna drop somewhere on the map. Where do you drop? Well, a lot of players seem to drop just as soon as they can. As soon as it becomes available, they fly out there. Now you could jump out with all those guys or you could take a more tactical approach. So on the map on the screen here, I've shown you all the forges that are available. Now forges are a pretty important part of the game, but we'll get to that in a second. I would highly recommend that you try and land on at least one of the forges. Generally around these areas is a lot of loot and because of that, there's other players as well. Now you could go to a super safe area, uh, a corner of the map where no other players are gonna be. However, one of the mechanics of the game is the chicken nugget system. Now, I know this sounds pretty ridiculous, but uh, it's a thing. So when you knock somebody out, like down but not out in Fortnite and in PUBG and every other game, in this game, they get turned into a chicken instead. So they're not dead, but they can't really fight back or anything like that. And they're waiting to be revived, except they self-revive themselves after 30 seconds. So if you shoot somebody for a lethal amount of damage, they turn into a chicken. And then if you or one of your teammates or even an enemy kills that chicken, you get the chicken nugget because you turned that player into a chicken. Now the chicken nugget is important because of the forge thing that we are talking about earlier. So if you've taken my advice and you've landed near a forge, you got a bit of gear and then you shot at another player, you turn them into a chicken and then either you or your teammate killed them, you got the chicken nugget, you also got 50 shards for turning them into a chicken and hopefully if you've been doing a decent amount of looting, you've also disenchanted some gear, you can do that by pressing X on stuff that you don't want. You now go to the forge, open it up by holding in E, for me it's F but I rebound my key bindings and uh, you'll be presented with a bunch of different options as to what you want to make. Now depending on which class you're playing, I do think this uh, this changes a little bit in terms of priority. Typically on most classes, it's a good idea to make your legendary weapon. However, on the mage, I feel like the stone spear isn't so powerful that you need to prioritize that. Depending on how many shards I have, I typically either make an ability, an armor, or I make the weapon and an ability. So I go for either an aggressive start or a pretty passive start. Uh, depending on how many other players you've around you, 
and how you're feeling, you can choose whether you want to make that weapon, which is a serious amount of shards to commit, or you could make an ability and a piece of armor. Now a quick mention on the armor and why I choose to prioritize that over even making a legendary weapon or a really helpful ability. Each piece of armor at the epic or legendary, so the purple or orange rarity, gives you a stat bonus. So at the legendary value, the legs or the greaves give you 30% movement speed while you're on your horse. Hey! The chest piece lets you regenerate 15 health every five seconds. The gloves allowed you to reload 30% faster and also swap to your other weapon 30% faster. And the helmet gives you a 30% cooldown reduction on all your abilities, which means you can use your abilities 30% faster after you've used them. On top of that, each piece of legendary armor gives you 300 extra shield, so to say, which you can then regenerate by drinking armor potions. So 300 extra health effectively with each piece of armor. When you get all four legendary pieces of armor, you effectively have double your starting health pool. So legendary armor is definitely worth considering. It's 150 shards to make both the ability and armor or 120 shards to make just the weapon. So there is some sort of thought process here about how many shards you have and if you can go and then spend the shards and then go pick up some more shards, it's really good to make all three at the first forge if you've had enough action that you can hold the 200 shards, make the weapon and the ability, then go get some more shards and then go make the armor as well. And if you have any left over, definitely make those potions. But yeah, that's, that's the forging system in a nutshell and that's the thought process behind that. One thing to note, when you are dropping in on this first place, you're getting all the loot, you'll notice there's three different types of chests. So you have the one that looks like your standard treasure chest. It's got the sort of rounded top and out of that can come anything from weapons to armor to abilities. So this is just like the everything chest. Then you have the very square, box-like chests. These are specifically potions, however, they're still very important. Please pick up those potions. I see a lot of new players neglecting to pick up potions, but for a lot of classes, you don't have any way to heal at all. In fact, only three of the five classes can actually heal themselves. So picking up the health potions, which are green, and the armor potions, which actually nobody can heal armor right now, other than the engineer with his passive, they're very, very important for staying alive if you take damage. You can use G and H to heal with those by default. And then finally, you have the last type of chest, which is sort of a rectangular box chest and these are the weapons chests. Now I am gonna make a video later on down the line where all of the weapon chests are in the popular areas. However, if you can figure out in your, in your favorite area to land, for me, it's typically Lumberfall. Um, I like to land at this spot here. There's always a weapons chest here, so when I, when I drop, I know I immediately have a weapon and then I can turn around and fight and get that chicken nugget on anybody that's in the area. So yeah, paying attention to where the weapon chests are and prioritizing going for those first in the immediate fights is gonna help you at least survive more than the first minute. And of course, as we briefly mentioned earlier, from the other chests, you can also get abilities. I'm gonna do a class breakdown of each individual class on what all of the abilities do and when they get to be used. But generally, you want to pick them up. Some are kind of better than others for combat and some are more utility. Try and pay attention to the little description on them and you can see if, if you need a healing potion at that moment in time or if you're actually full health, then you're probably better off taking like the net shot or the charge or something like that if you're playing warrior. But all right, we've, we've made it. We've landed in the first forge. We've killed somebody. You forge the weapon. What do you do next? Well, in typical battle royale fashion, you kind of just wander around and go and find other people. The objective of the game is just to be the last duo or squad standing. You can even just be the last person standing and you will win the game that way. Wander further into the map, stay out of the circle. The red zone is obviously bad and uh, go find other players and kill them. Once you kill them, go to another forge, make some more armor, make some more abilities, kill more players, go to another forge, make some more armor, make some more abilities and just keep on going like that. One thing that is worth mentioning, when you craft something at the forge, you are then locked out of forging it again. So if you make a piece of armor at Lumberfall, you cannot make another piece of armor at Lumberfall, at least for you. Other members of our team can, but you individually, you're gonna have to go to another forge if you wanna make another piece of armor. This is a way to make the players move around the map more and encourage more fighting to happen. One quick thing to note that uh, I see a few very new players don't know is you can get on your horse by pressing the Z key on your keyboard or the Z key. I recommend mounting up pretty much any situation, uh, just allows you to move faster and it doesn't really make too much more noise than your footsteps. So yeah, definitely make sure you're making use of your horse. It'll help you get around the map a lot faster. And I think that about covers it guys for a, a basic introduction to the game. Hopefully this has explained some things to you guys. You understand the chicken nugget and the shard system. They're both pretty important to winning the game. So make sure you are getting involved in the action, but also looting the right chests and making the right calls and going to the right place at the right time. Hopefully you're able to find some people to play with in the Discord server if you don't have any but like I say, there is a lot of people in there. In the next few videos, as I said, I'm gonna be going over the classes. So we're gonna go over uh, in alphabetical order, probably Assassin, 
Engineer, Hunter, Mage, and Warrior. However, if there is one of the classes that you would like specifically to see a video on first, let me know in those comments down below. I'm also gonna try to do an advanced tips and tricks for some of you players who have got to grips with the game over the past couple days and just need a little bit more help in the late game on making the right decisions on what to do after you understand the basics of the game. If you enjoyed this video, guys, make sure you go ahead and click that like button. If you want more Realm Royale content from the Baggins, in the meantime, make sure you go ahead and click subscribe. Let me know if there's any other sort of video ideas you'd like to see on Realm Royale in the future. If there's anything you're struggling with, let me know in those comments. I'll try and help out. And as always, guys, I'll see you all in the next video.